On Thursday, July 17th, a pivotal workshop was held to address the management of end-of-life waste from electric vehicles and renewable energy systems. The session aimed to validate crucial findings, recommendations, and best environmental practices to help the country stay ahead of this emerging challenge. Don Pierre Nathaniel, Chief Sustainable Development and Environment Officer at the Department of Sustainable Development, spoke about the event, which was supported by the German government's NDC Tech program and the GEF7 electric vehicle project. As part of the journey, we are looking at uh, that transition in many ways. We are looking at the policy aspect, we are looking at the regulatory, uh, awareness raising, capacity building, fiscal incentives, and we're also looking at the demonstration, actual having demonstration of that transition and looking specifically at the government fleet and how we can support uh, key agencies like the Postal Service and Customs and the police and the health sector and so on with that transition process as they replace their internal combustion engine vehicles. Pierre Nathaniel further acknowledged that managing the disposal of traditional internal combustion engine vehicles has been a challenge, emphasizing the importance of proactive planning as the island moves forward with its transition to electric vehicles. So in transitioning and in pushing people towards electric uh, vehicles, we do not want to have a similar situation where we have not thought through how we will dispose of these vehicles and the parts that they contain. So they contain batteries and then there are issues to do with solar panels in some cases. There's the electric, the elect other electronic parts of those vehicles. Uh, uh, vehicles, there we have the inverters and so on. And we want to ensure that these are disposed of in a safe manner, that they do not pose a hazard to the public, to St. Lucia, to our environment. While the adoption of electric vehicles is still in its early stages in St. Lucia, Pierre Nathaniel emphasized the advantages of early planning and preparation. We don't have the numbers of electric vehicles here in St. Lucia at the moment that will create a problem now, but we want to plan for the future. We want to put in systems and mechanisms. So we are working with Black Forest Solutions, a consultancy team, that are helping us look at this very closely, very holistically, in coming up with the recommendations recommendations, whether they be regulatory and uh, um, capacity building wise and incentives and looking at all of the different things that we need to consider in transitioning. Rafaela Crazer, Technical Director at Black Forest Solutions, the consulting firm supporting the project, pointed out both the challenges and opportunities that small island developing states face in managing electric vehicle disposal. Lucia is a small island development state and you don't have the volumes to treat it alone in the country because it doesn't make financial sense or technical sense even to develop a recycling plan for batteries for example in the country. There are some strategies that we are presenting today in the workshop which are regional approaches to deal with these materials but usually what happens today at the low scale but what could happen in the future is enhancing the export of these materials for further processing outside the country, considering the economy of scale of the solutions that are required to, to deal with these waste streams. The workshop brought together a wide range of stakeholders, including representatives from both the public and private sectors, as well as key players from the energy and transport industries, customs authorities and car dealerships. While electric vehicle use in St. Lucia remains in its infancy, experts say now is the time to act. With input from international partners and local leadership, the island is laying the groundwork for a cleaner, more sustainable future, proving that proactive planning is essential in turning today's challenges into tomorrow's opportunities. For Choice News Now, I am Dyer Liner.